and uh, so uh, we have to go on with our uh, program we have now the second story is a pre-recorded interview with uh, Douglas Gray from Tom Judd, the IFMB CAD Board Chair. Hey everybody, Tom Judd from CED, getting the privilege to interview Dr. Doug Gray here from Kaiser Permanente uh, as, uh, as this portion of the program today. So Doug, uh, uh, Dr. Gray, tell us about yourself. Uh, Tom, thanks very much. It's been a privilege to work with you over the last several decades around clinical technology and engineering. Uh, I began uh, as a vascular and thoracic surgeon with Kaiser Permanente in 1984, uh, but soon realized that I uh, probably needed a different uh, outlet uh, to enhance my, uh, my impact uh, in, in Kaiser. And one of the areas that I sought uh, uh, and was interesting was clinical technology. Uh, Kaiser had not done any uh, uh, aggregated purchasing over that uh, several first several decades and, and between 1988 and about 2004 developed a very robust system for purchasing and I was fortunate enough to be involved in, uh, in that uh, uh, effort. Uh, likewise, the uh, Kaiser has been involved in the integration of biomedical equipment for their IT systems and electronic record and that likewise provided a, a, a fertile ground. I truly loved my uh, clinical uh, activities around vascular and thoracic uh, patient care, but Kaiser allowed me the freedom to have other areas of interest as well uh, to make my career with them rich. Thank you, Doug. Uh, we're going to dive a little deeper in the look at Kaiser Permanente and some examples there because, you know, it, uh, and next slide, Calroy, the, uh, the size of Kaiser as a health system with nearly 40 hospitals and, and so on uh, is like a health system of a, of a medium-sized country. And so we're looking at Kaiser uh, example as we look at whole countries. So Doug, uh, as a surgeon and as someone who got involved with supply chain and with medical equipment, uh, tell us uh, some of the strategies and some of the learnings you had about um, optimizing performance of medical equipment as a clinician. Sure, Tom. Thanks. Sir. That's a, an excellent question. Kaiser is a unique uh, uh, model of healthcare because it is an, an enormous system. There are uh, 38 hospitals and 11 million uh, patients across the country, uh, wide geographic area representation, as well as, uh, again, uh, uh, healthcare systems the size of some small and middle uh, and middling uh, countries. There are 400,000 medical devices that are within Kaiser. And as you can imagine, the complexity of what Kaiser has to offer for uh, uh, clinical care is remarkable. Uh, one of the things we learned it was uh, that to have a uh, systematic approach to some of these uh, uh, equipment uh, arrays and inventories would allow us to do much better in our equipment selection and our equipment maintenance and likewise the clinical care afforded by that equipment. Uh, uh, having a, a, a system-wide strategy was advantageous to everyone and uh, everyone won by that uh, that broad thinking. Well, Doug, as you uh, talk about that, I think about what, what you call and what I call when, as, as I work with you, fleet management of the health technology management life cycle, or the clinical engineering life cycle. Tell us a little bit more about that from your point of view. Okay, if we could have the next slide. The, uh, the, uh, I, the uh, fleet management really is, is uh, uh, founded and it's something that we all do with our homes and all do with a lot of our lives, but in uh, healthcare is, uh, becomes far more complex. Uh, fleet management is really considering the entire uh, array of products across a system as being something that you can both manage as well as optimize uh, th their use. Uh, one of the more tedious but critical elements of trying to do this is actually realizing the full array of system uh, equipment that you have within a system of uh, how many ventilators, how many anesthesia machines, EKG machines, monitors, etc. To be able to know 
from which uh, you're drawing as far as the utilization and the, uh, uh, the kind of the impact of that equipment. It requires a very, very rich collaboration across specialties, clini clinical, uh, clinical uh, clinicians, uh, biomedical engineering, uh, clinical systems engineering, IT, nursing, administration, everything has to be, uh, has to be uh, assessed. And when you do that inventory, and let's take example of ventilators, you're going to know the equipment type of uh, ventilator, the age of a ventilator, uh, clinical function of that, uh, that uh, particular piece of equipment, the repair history, and likewise, the replacement strategy that would be important in trying to, to uh, manage that. Once you know the, uh, that uh, amount of detail around a particular inventory of equipment, you're far more smarter at being able to understand how it functions, how long it lasts, what are the common problems that people have with, uh, with ventilators or equipment, what are the repair histories of these, what, which are good machines, bad machines, which ones, which ones function properly, which deliver the care. And likewise, when you go to replace it, uh, gives you uh, fertile uh, consideration for what uh, piece of equipment you would choose to, to uh, replace it. I think in, in oftentimes in circumstances, we, would, we as users would know more than the companies about how their equipment function and be able to help them troubleshoot their equipment, likewise anticipate problems and be able to be smarter about how we use the equipment it's, uh, and, and, and likewise how we use the equipment across the system. Oftentimes we had clinical needs that were very complicated in tertiary or quaternary house care hospitals, but simple in clinics, uh, clinic setting or smaller hospitals. And we could actually tailor the piece of equipment to the clinical use. Oftentimes you would find a very complex piece of equipment being underutilized in a clinic where you could move that piece of equipment into an intensive care unit or an emergency room and be, get much more effective uh, uh, usage of that piece of equipment. Uh, the reverse is true you, where you had simple equipment where people would need just a bed not a smart bed or not an integrated bed, but just a bed and be able to provide that uh, element of equipment in a way where you could optimize the entire uh, inventory of what you, you had. Uh, the, the, as you can imagine, management of a system like this is very uh, complicated and requires everyone's participation. Everyone benefits from the good integration of care, but it's got to be uh, that team approach that makes a difference in how a program like this can be successful. Great answer, Doug. Um, I know we've got a couple, two, three minutes left. Let's talk about the specific examples of applying what you've just described to uh, the, what Kaiser called digital operating room. Uh, thanks, Tom. Another good question. Uh, the digital operating room is something that we're all uh, becoming either either familiar with or, or using already. And what that is, is provision of uh, surgical care or interventional care in a way where there's use of uh, images, anesthesia, sterility, equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this the picture uh, that you're looking at shows uh, the digital operating theater in, uh, in use with a single uh, performing surgeon, but I think it understates the complexity of what these digital operating systems are like. Now, the next slide will capture better, and you can see now that, that a, digital, a digital operating room is, is very, very uh, uh, complicated and integrated at the same time. It requires the, the equipment of anesthesia, monitoring, imaging, intervention, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all with the uh, anesthesia, anesthesia uh, uh, clinical system engineers, nursing, uh, surgery, uh, et cetera, et cetera, to be able to have all this equipment uh, perform properly be integrated so that the images that are captured both end up in a useful format for the surgeon or nurse 
or anesthesiologist that needs them, and likewise be archived properly with a PAC system so that they can be retrieved and be consistent with the, the uh, provision of care around a single patient. And uh, you can see that for every piece of equipment, there were multiple choices of types of equipment, and one would be uh, remiss if you didn't realize that with surgical preference or anesthesiology preference, that there can be lots of different choices of how to use these pieces of equipment, which ones to purchase, which ones integrate with each other, which ones give the same and consistent signal to each other or the same and consistent output for a, a medical record. And so I think this uh, 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 slide really speaks to the issue of uh, it, you're really, really uh, creating a, uh, an integrated whole system that provides uh, care that does optimize it into uh, a, a digital operating theater. And uh, this uh, is a perfect example of having the end product of this process be the result of, again, a rich collaboration of clinicians, nurses, clinical engineering, uh, anesthesia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, allows uh, this uh, optimized performance to take place on behalf of patients. Doug, when I think about our time together and, and with the team of clinical engineering, the team of surgeons, you know, I, I have great fond memories of how we pushed each other and how you made us better. Hopefully we gave you the tools that allowed you to do things better. There was the integration of all this equipment into the electronic health record and, you know, entered the digital age. Um, it was quite a partnership and we're so thankful for how you pushed us and showed us when we were not doing so well, Doug, as well as congratulate us when we were. So I think clinical engineering ended up being a lot better because we got to uh, listen to you and work with you. Well, I think one of the unifying uh, factors for me, and I think once, it, once, it, once we all adopted this basic philosophy, it made sense, is if you make all of your decisions around what would be best for the patients in provision of care and provision of clinical technology, then this, the, uh, the conclusions of that really fall from that decision. So once you decide that it's all about the patient, and it's all about the provision of care, then uh, the teamwork becomes really secondary and it's a byproduct of that uh, recognition of who's really driving the process. And that to me was the hallmark of the performance of the excellent teams that, that I uh, participate in and helped sometimes lead. So thanks for your time today, Doug. My pleasure, thank you very much. Bye for now. Thanks uh, for the talks uh, from uh, Doug and uh, for Tom's uh, interview.